Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Elon Community Church, United Church of Christ. We are here on a very special Sunday on our Confirmation Sunday. Uh, we are confirming 10 of our young folks into the church today. The bad news is, is that three of them were not able to be here today due to COVID concerns. And uh, that's one of the realities we live in today. Uh, so we will still be lifting up their names uh, out loud. We won't uh, do more than that. And when they are able to come back, we will uh, give them the ability to be confirmed here too. But uh, we just want to say thank you all for being here. You are in for a wonderful treat today. Our choir has returned. And you can notice that it's, we're going to call it the COVID-spaced choir. Um, and so we've got some here. We've got some in the seats. It's changed our seating order. Uh, some of you were used to sitting closer to the front. Um, our confirmands are taking up these front rows today. And in this loft is the cathedral brass. And we are so uh, privileged to have them here today. We feel that we're ready. We're going to do it safely. And we're doing everything we can. And thank you today for wearing your masks in order that we might be able to do all of these things. Um, all of our confirmants, to my knowledge, have either had at least one shot or have been uh, vaccinated, uh, but a lot of our children can't be uh, vaccinated yet, so that's why it's still a, an ongoing concern. And we have several parents that are teachers, and teachers are still kind of running that very rough road, uh, being involved and being surrounded by unvaccinated children for, for their daily life. Uh, and trying to, to be able to keep uh, moving forward. So let's just hold them all in our prayers today, and I know that we will still have an excellent, wonderful day. Um, just a couple very quick announcements before we begin, and that is that uh, the Soaring High Book Club is coming up very soon. If you would like to be able to be a part of that, they are uh, reading The Secret Life of Bees, and we'd have copies available here in the library. Also, this coming week is going to be our first of two of our two last town hall meetings on our five-year goal. If you haven't had a chance to be a part, this first one is a Zoom meeting. And so I will send out, we will be sending out the Zoom invitation tomorrow morning on joys and concerns. And we'll also do it again on Tuesday morning so that you won't miss it. Um, then the next opportunity will be next Sunday. And that'll be right after worship. You can stay right here in the sanctuary, and we are going to have an in-person gathering. So uh, if you're not a Zoom person and would like to do that in person, that you can do that next Sunday. And everyone is welcome to take part. There are other announcements. I hope you'll fill them out. You'll see that there's a place for visitors, and we hope you'll fill that out. Um, we want to go ahead and celebrate this wonderful day and worship God now in these moments of preparation and call.
If you would please stand and join me in the call to worship. We are called during our journey to believe. When you send your spirit, we will sing praise to you as long as we live. invocation and blessing the confirmands. Dear God, through the powerful wind of your Holy Spirit, breathe upon our confirmands this day and all the other days that you will be with them while they are upon earth. May the vows they express by the game and your church with gifts of faithful service bold witness, and constant love. Bless, guide, and direct Abby, Brayton, Emma, Henry, Joe, Marissa, Reese, Shana, Whitman, and Wiley, their families, so that together we are at Elon Community Church, UCC, may bless one another and others with life-giving ministry. Be with us now. Amen.
one another. reading is from the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 3 and 9 through 13. Hear these words. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, which according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. 
Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. And through this scripture, God is still speaking, and we are listening. I know we have some children here. Um, you can stay in your seat, or if you want to come up forward and sit in front of these uh, compromands, that would be fine, too. It's up to you. Eliana, I think you're the only one. You're right up here, so you can see me pretty good. All right. We're going to, um, I'm going to stay up here to do my children's sermon then this morning. So, Pastor Randy's going to read our scripture today. And, of course, you know, Eliana, you've got a brother that's, a comfort man today. It's a very special day in these young people's lives. And Jesus teaches us a little lesson uh, in our gospel lesson today. For you see, the disciples, you know what they did? They, were, they began to brag. You know, he had chosen them to teach people about God and to follow um, Jesus, and, and, and they listened to his teachings. But, you know, they got kind of boastful. And they said, you know, I'm the greatest disciple of all. And Jesus said, called me first to follow him. And, and then John said, no, no, I am the best one of all. And James said, no, no, you're wrong. I'm the greatest one of all. And then it, they stopped at the house of Carmen Pernium, and Jesus asked him, what are you guys arguing about? And the disciples looked down and they shuffled their feet. None of them really want to reply, you know, kind of like, you know, you've been called out. Have you been called out before like that? You know. Jesus frowned and said, don't you understand me yet? If you want to be first, you have to come last. If you want to be the greatest, you have to serve everyone. Think of a child in the emperor's eye. The child is not important, but in God's eyes, a child is the most important. And when you welcome a child, you welcome me to God. And the disciples got very quiet. After all this time, they still had a lot to learn. And you know, these confirmands today, that's the lesson that, you, you know, you, you made your statements of faith, and y'all did such a good job about what you, you learned about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and that's inside of you. But it's what you do with it when you take it out of this church. You, you're not the greatest, but it's all about you're the least. And, and the least serve one another. And I've already seen you guys do some great things. And you're going to go from this place, and you're going to serve God and be that kind of person that God wants you to be because you are important to God and what you teach others and what, how you serve others is that. Let's say a prayer about that. Gracious God, we thank you for these children and these youth here today, and we know that they are important in your eyes. As we go from this place, each one of us needs to remember it is important to serve you. And we all say, Amen. As we turn to our gospel lesson today, we're going to be remembering the gospel of Mark and continuing in the gospel of Mark. As we just got done reading the rest of chapter 8 last week, now we're going to be in chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. And it's important to note that as we do so, you are hearing a little bit of a follow-up from last week's words. And I want to remind us of that today. So listen now as I read from chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, though, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed... He will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying 
and were afraid to ask him. When they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What are you arguing about on the way? Or what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For the way, on the way, they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put them among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Thus ends our scripture readings. Let us be in prayer together. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, we've finally come to a day that usually takes place on Pentecost Sunday. That's usually in May. It's usually in the spring. Obviously, we're in a whole different place, though, now, aren't we? We had to do things differently. We had to act differently. And we would not have... Actually, we might have actually been better off to do it in May than we're doing it now. Uh, as, I, as I remember, there was some uh, kind of loosening by, by May. But, but at the time when we planned this, we said there was no way we could do it at Pentecost. So we were going to do it sometime in the early fall of this year, thinking, of course, that everything was going to be great. We were wrong. But you all have been wonderful participants. You have been a part of Zoom meetings. And I don't know if some of you remember the great Christmas play that they put on in Advent. I still think that was one of, the, of our better plays. And I thought you guys did a great job of helping us. Emma did the whole thing while she was in the car. She had to do her whole part because she's racing out of here to go to a soccer game in just a little bit. Uh, we've had to work around people's schedules and other situations, but we've been on Zoom. We've been able to work together. And sometimes I know you all have to be exhausted of Zoom. You were doing it on school. You've been doing it for other things. And I'm sure when you get home, the last thing you want to think about is getting on another Zoom meeting. But you did. And I thank you for that. Pastor Sharon is our leader for our youth and our children. In fact, we have youth group today. We have children's group today. She puts all her heart and effort into being with you, and she's been with you, uh, many of you, since you were that small. In fact, I still have a picture of Wit breaking ground for the CLC, and I think you were about that big. I'm not sure. But he carried that shovel over there and broke the ground. In fact, most of you here, I have also been privileged to be a part of your lives and have gotten a chance to know you, and you've pl taken part in things throughout the years. But that's Sharon's job, and one of the great privileges I have at this point is coming in and working with Pastor Sharon as we go through this process we call confirmation, this time at which we train, literally go through what we would call almost a baptismal training. Now, most of you have been baptized as a child, and you know that confirmation was one of those things that got added on into the church at a later time, because it used to be when you were baptized, you were just a part of the church. But I think they realized that we didn't, you didn't know what was going on when you were a baby or a small child, so it was important for you to have a chance to be confronted with what this all means. And we know that you did it during Sunday school. We know you've done it during kick. We know you've done it as part of youth group and your actions and all that you've done. But there came a time when we wanted to ask you specifically, who is it that you say that God is in your life? What does it mean to have Jesus Christ as the part of or the focus of your faith and the focus of your understanding of life. And we wanted to give you that chance. 
and Wiley and Reese and Abby, they're hopefully watching online today, and they also did the same as you did. And I'll bet if you were really honest, you would say, uh, I didn't always maybe pay attention the way I'd like to, or when we come out at the end of it, you might say, I don't know if I really learned everything that we talked about, or maybe you haven't retained it. And, you know, we could all say, yeah, we were just expecting you to do your best, and that's all we asked. But here comes this story today in the gospel, and that's why I wanted to read this story in the gospel today. Now, you know, you would think of the 12 disciples as the ones who really mattered, the ones who really counted. They were the ones closest to the actual Jesus, to actually the human Jesus that walked on the earth, that was there to teach, to heal. Now, this, of course, was just prior to him going to the cross, but he was with them. And I want you to hear their journey. And I want you to compare it to yours. Jesus, when, when they proclaimed that he was something special, that he was the Son of God, Jesus then turned around and said, Do you know what you just said? I'm going to be killed. He doesn't say crucified. He doesn't, you know, we've almost cleaned that word up now. You know, we're, oh, you've been crucified. He said killed. I'm going to be killed. But I'm going to rise again. And you know what the disciples did? They fell apart. They didn't get it. They didn't understand. So if you feel that there's anything you still question, you still are open to thinking about, I want you to know you're in good company. I want you to know that all of us go through that same thing daily. If we did a test right now for everyone in the congregation, how, one, how do you think they would all fare? We don't test them every week, right? We don't test you, right? No. We could, right? We could pass out a surprise quiz <laughs> and see what their thinking is or hand them a blank piece of paper and say, write your statement of faith. Yeah. We would all be in different places. But you see, God is so much bigger than what we consider to be almost defined as a loyal, loyalty oath. We're asked one simple thing. We're asked simply to believe. And when all the training was done and everything else was done, we asked you that simple question. Do you believe? And you all said yes. You said it on your own. You didn't say it under parent parental pressure, I hope. And you might have even said yes, and you're not sure even what you said yes to. Join the club. Celebrate the truth that our faith is something that is redefined every day. It is something that is shaping us and with us and being a part of everything that we do. And so when you did all those things growing up, when you had all those differing experiences, from ski slopes to receiving Bibles in the third grade to playing games here to going to music camp to having vacation Bible school to doing all the different things that you've done, all the different programs that you've experienced, all of the conversations that you've tried to have, sometimes frustrating, sometimes clear, all of that is a part of your journey. It's a part of what has brought you here today. And when you leave from here, you haven't graduated. This isn't a graduation class. You're going to be just like all of us. You're going to continue to understand and feel what that, what that belief means. I can look back on my own life and see there were times when I felt a, a, an affection or a relationship with individuals that I, was, that I had as Sunday school teachers and other people in my life or family members who I was just felt that they showed and they just brought out a, an idea of faith and it meant something to me. 
But there was that time when it meant something personally and I was able to do something. And you know, it doesn't matter what age you are and what, when, it, when you get to a certain place in your life, you may find that you're going to feel different than you do today. And my prayer is, is that that will be a strengthening of your faith. Because we live in a world today that does not promote this. And that's why you heard the Apostle Paul say, make yourself a living sacrifice. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, be changed in your mind, in your heart, by looking to God and looking to a place inside of yourself. Because you're going to be called upon whether you believe it or not. You're going to be called upon to do things you never expect to do. And how will you respond? Will you respond in the, in the source, with a source of strength that comes from in here? Or will you need strength that comes from somewhere else? I pray that you will always sense that there is something here so that when you feel that here, you can also experience what is outside of you, the support and love of community and friends and family and people in your lives that can help you along the way. But as you come forward today, as you take on the mantle of what we consider to be called people of faith, don't think you're an expert. Don't think you got it all figured out, and that's okay. But don't let that be an excuse to stop thinking. And don't let that be an excuse to stop trying. So many people think that when it gets hard, it's time to leave. So many people believe that when you have one bad experience, they'll all be bad experiences. And some people try to live off of one good experience their whole lives. Let this be a journey. Like the rest of us, we come to this place knowing that God means something to us and means something in the world. We know that we can't always fully define it, but we want to be a part of it, and we want to humbly move forward. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. You know, this sounds really sweet right now. In the Bible, it says you need to be like a child and you need to receive a child. Do you know on the pecking order where children stood in that society? The lowest of the low. Jesus was saying, if you want to be a person of faith, you have to be ready to maybe not be at the head and not be the greatest and not be everything, not always be successful. But in the midst of your life, no matter what you face, whether it is failure or even great success, God's going to be with you. And that's where we will go. And that's how we will roll in our lives every day. It's not always going to be easy. But then nothing worth doing is ever easy. I hope you'll be a part and you'll walk along with us from this day forward. And I am so proud of each of you. Just as I have had this wonderful privilege of being a part of this congregation and seeing people's faith and their actions and all that they do, this is what brings us together as the community of faith. And they're here to celebrate with you today. There are many more who are watching online and are rooting for you. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. Let God be real. And let the love of Jesus Christ continue to transform and shape you in all the ways that are going to happen. And that's our prayer. Amen. We have this song that's, if you're not crying by the end of it, I don't know what will make you cry. But this is such a great song. Um, and it's really easy to sing. 
if you've never sung it before, but um, let's, we don't need to stand up to sing this today. Let's just sing this, but just follow the words. It's in the, bo it's in the hymnal, but it's also in the bulletin. This is our confirmation hymn before we begin with our children. to turn in the bolt. You're going to need your hymnal for this. The hymnal's at the very beginning, page 38. And it will say affirmation of baptism. Province. Christ Jesus alone being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together grows into the holy temple of Christ in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Confirmands, would you all please stand? We're going to ask you to answer these questions, and since you have answered them to us personally, we want you to answer them loudly, or at least out loud, uh, <laughs> so that we can hear you proclaim these words. Do you want to start? Do you desire to affirm your baptism or be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? 